Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about a few interesting data loading tricks in Power Query. Let's start. All right, trick number one is that how do you apply a dynamic get the latest file from a folder kind of a filter in Power Query? Take a look at this folder. We have a couple of files in that folder, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And maybe I want to have the latest file that I just created in that particular folder. I don't really want to have the old data, just the latest data. Now, if you did not know the trick that I'm going to talk about, what you would end up doing is that in this particular folder, you will delete all the files and just keep one file so that Power Query is able to read that latest file. But that is a bit of manual work. Let's just see how do we automate that. All right, I'm in Power Query and the first step that I have done in Power Query is to just connect my folder to my query. And you can see that I have a function folder.files and that's where I have the name of the path of the folder and I can take a look at all the files which are there in that particular folder. It's pretty simple, you can actually do that. Now, once you connect the folder to Power Query, what you get is a couple of things or properties of that particular file. So I can take a look at the name of the file, the extension of the file, and alongside I get three other date-based properties, which is date accessed, modified, and created. I can actually go ahead and open up the filter for date created and over there I can apply a filter and I can say, hey, keep the latest file. So over here and I can say, hey, keep the latest file. And this is a dynamic latest filter. You can take a look at the formula bar. Latest is a dynamic filter and it is going to take a look at that folder, take a look at all the files and the date created of that files and keep the latest file over there. Now do not get confused by 2010. Your 2005 file could have been the most recent created file in that particular folder. And in that case, it's going to actually keep 2005 file, not 2010 file. So just be aware of that. Apart from this latest, filter that we have just applied. You can also apply a couple of other interesting filters if you wish. So if I just maybe open up this filter in the date and time filters, I can actually go ahead and take a look at previous three months files, two months files, one year file. It's a pretty, pretty standard filter just with the user interface. You can actually go ahead and apply these filters to make it more dynamic. All right, trick number two is that how do you create a dynamic path for all the files and the folders that you're connecting inside of Power Query? Now, I have also done a video on how do you create a dynamic path in Excel. I'm going to leave a link to that video in the blog post. But for now, let's just take a look that if we had to do that in Power Query, how can we actually do that? For that, you'll have to actually create a parameter. So I'm just going to open up the queries pane right here. In the home tab, I have something called as parameters. I'm actually going to create a parameter, which is a new parameter. Let's just give this parameter a name and let's just call this as a path parameter. You can actually call it anything. And you can write some description if you would like. Uh, the type of the data is going to be a text because the path of the folder is going to be a text. And the current value, let's just write ABC for now. I mean, ABC is not a legit path, but for now, let's just write ABC. I'm just going to say, okay, and a path gets created, which is where the current value is this. Now, let's just go over to the data loading tricks and let's just go copy that particular path, uh, which is the path of the folder, which is where all my files are kept. Just carefully copy that part. Do not copy the inverted commas, just the path. Press Control C. And I'm just going to come back to that particular path and start to edit that parameter. And I'll feed that particular path right here. So I'm just going to feed that path right here. And that's the current value that I will input in that particular folder. I'm just going to click on OK. And that's the path that is there. Now, if you would like to change the path of the folder, obviously, you're just going to come here and change the path right here. Now, as of now, we just have one single query in our particular data model which is just data loading tricks that I'm just playing around with. Now you could have many data sets that are just coming from different sources. And if they're all combined into one particular folder, you can all connect them through the single path. So at every single query, you'll have to actually go to the source step and maybe uh, just over here, delete that entire thing and maybe just link that to the path right here and close the bracket and press enter. Now this path is nothing but the parameter that I just declared, which is right here. And it's going to start to read that data from that particular path and the query still works absolutely fine. That's one thing that you'll have to do for all the queries. And once you actually do that, all the queries are going to be referring to that dynamic path. And in case your path changes, there is only one single place that you will have to make a change and this will all be dynamic. All right, trick number three has to do with data load performance. Now, if you have a lot of Excel files which you're trying to connect it to Power Query, those data sets can be very slow as compared to data 
from a CSV file. So if you have the option of converting your Excel files to CSV files, you're going to see a tremendous boost in terms of data load uh, when it comes to getting the data into Power Query. Now, Chris Webb has a blog post where he's talked about that thing, where he tests the CSV as compared to Excel, and CSVs are way faster as compared to Excel. Now, if converting all your Excel files to CSV files seems a bit of work, in the comment section of the same blog post, Eric has mentioned about a Power Automate connector and you should actually take a look that it can help you convert all your Excel files into CSV files. All right, trick number four is creating helper tables in your Power BI model. A lot of times when you're trying to create a Power BI model, you would need the assistance of a helper table that you're going to use it for some or the other purpose. Now, one way is that you create that table in Excel and connect that Excel file to Power Query. Now, in that scenario, you'll have to take care of that Excel file that becomes a little of a liability. What I will suggest is that you use DAX to create such tables, or you can actually copy and paste the values from Excel and directly connect that to Power Query. You will have flexibilities to edit those tables as well. Now, the DAX way, I'm actually going to link a video which is about the data table function and you can take a look at that and you learn how do you actually create tables using the data table function. The other way is that you can actually copy and paste the data from your Excel and paste the data inside of Power Query and you can actually work with that table. Let me just show you that. All right, I'm in Excel and here is where you can see that I have a very simple two columnar table that I'm just going to use it in my model. So I can actually just go ahead and press Control C to copy this particular data set. Note that I'm just copying this particular data. I'm not really connecting this Excel file to my Power Query. I'm just going to press Control C. I'm going to come back to Power Query. In the Home tab, I do have an option called Enter Data. This option is also available in Power Query as well as Power BI. So I'm just going to click on enter data and that's where I will have the ability to just paste that control V just to paste that right here. I can give this table a particular name. Let's just say table and I can click on OK and that table actually gets created like a copy paste of that particular table. Now if I have to maybe change the values of the particular table or maybe add a few values, what I can actually do is I can go back to the source step. In the source step, I can just maybe click on the gear icon and that's where I have the entire table and that's where if I want I can add more columns, add more values. Although it's a little bit of work to be able to come here and edit the values but at least you don't have to take care of that extra Excel file that got created which is where you have to take care of that Excel file. All right, trick number five is that how can you create a date right from the name of the Excel file? A lot of times you would not really have a dedicated date column in the data set and you may have to pick up the date column from the name of the Excel file perhaps. Take a look in the name of the Excel file. We have uh, the name of the file and .xlsx and maybe I'd like to call all of these files or have a date column in all of these Excel files is 1st January of that particular year. So 1st Jan 2005, 1st Jan 2006, so on and so forth. And all the data I'd like to label that against 1st of Jan of that particular year. How do I actually create the date from the name of the file? It's very, very simple. All that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come to the add column and write a quick formula. Whatever I'm doing with the formula, you can actually also do that using the interface as well. So I'm actually going to come here in the add columns tab. In the custom column, I will start to write one simple formula. The first thing that I'm going to actually going to do is I'm just going to get rid of the dot XLSX that is being added right here. So I'm just going to come here and let's just call this as a date, first of all. So date. And I'm just going to call this uh, call a function called text.replace. And I'm going to say that, hey, here is my text. Uh, this particular name column is my text. So I'm just going to click on that name column. And I'm going to say that from this name column, I want you to get rid of dot XLSX. So the old text to replace is dot XLSX and the new replacement is nothing. So just uh, close that bracket. I'm just going to click on OK and I do get a column, which is where I have all the years as of now. What I'm now going to do is I'm just going to wrap around this particular thing into a date function. So I'm just going to write equals to hash date. Now hash date function actually accepts three things. It accepts the year, the month, and the date in that particular order. Note that the text.replace actually gives me a particular uh, name of the file, which is nothing but the year of the file, but this is a text and I want the year as a number. So I'm just going to convert this text into a number. I'm just going to say number.from and I'm going to say, hey, this actually delivers you a text, which is although a number, why don't you convert that into a number? So number.from, this actually gives me the year in which format? In the numeric format. I'm just going to maybe press comma 
and I'm now going to write the month. The month is going to be one, which is January, and the date is again going to be one. I close that bracket. I commit to the formula. And now what I have is a date created. You can assign a data type of a date. And once you actually open up the data set of this particular column, you will have the data set. And alongside, you will have the year column or the date column that we have actually created. Now, there could be a lot of ways in which you can actually create the year. All that I was trying to do was give you an example as you can actually create a date from the name of the Excel file itself. All right, those were a few interesting data loading tricks. Let me know if you have any questions around these and I'll be glad to help. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query course in case you're starting out with Power BI and you need structured help with learning Power Query or with DAX, learn the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more difficult problems. I will highly recommend that you take a look at my course. It's gonna be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers, bye.